Hello, and welcome to the Artificial Podcast with your host Nick Myers. Artificial intelligence, voice recognition, machine learning, robotic, actionable analytics. It is Nick's goal to help everyone understand how AI and voice technology are reshaping our lives both personally and within organizations. Your glimpse into the growing world of AI and voice first starts now. Nick Myers. Nick Myers. Nick Myers. Nick Myers. Nick Myers. Hey, Brett. What's up? Have you ever once in your life thought about owning a transparent TV? No. <gasps> well, if not a transparent TV, maybe a rollable phone? Uh? 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 Maybe, maybe that one, uh? yeah. Or, or maybe, just maybe, a personal drone ship that takes you from your rooftop to the love of your life's loof top, loof, loof top. Yep. I swear I ruined the whole thing. I have, I have thought of that. <laughs> We're straight to my loof top. God. Anyhow, well, I, I tried doing a, a creative lead-in, if you could tell this time. Because, Brett, all those pieces of tech that I just mentioned, yeah. we will be talking about in today's episode of the Artificial Podcast. Now on we camera. Review, now on camera. Oh... Uh... Hi, As, everybody. Hi. 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 <laughs> you finally get to see uh, what Brett and I look like now beyond the occasional photos we post. Isn't it great? See? No. Brett has fantastic art deco going on behind him because. Yeah, of do course... you like my landscape of Madison? <laughs> Madison, Wisconsin? Does everybody Gee, like I, I, I wonder if you live in Madison, Wisconsin. No, I don't. <laughs> I just like Madison, Wisconsin pictures. That's why I put it up. No, he's lying. He does live in Madison. We both no, I live do. in Chicago. Well, I live right out of Madison. But Anyhow, no, I bring up those different pieces of tech because that's exactly what we're going to be talking about in our episode today of the most interesting tech of CES 2021. Ooh, which are, does which it feel actually, weird to say 2021? I don't know. Sure. When I say 2021, I feel like I should be flying a car, you know? I mean, if you think back to uh, Back to the Future 2, they predicted in, what, 2010 we'd have flying cars, whatever the year was? 2015. Was. 2015, 2015 we should have flying cars. You know what? I want my shoes to tie themselves as well. Well, fortunately, you can't have that yet. Actually, I'm actually I think shocked they don't have self-tying you know, shoes. It does exist. It's just there's the practicality of it. Well, it's just too expensive to mass produce that and just tie your damn shoes. You know? That is true. See, and, and that's how I felt going through writing the episode notes for this week's episode, looking at some of these pieces of technology. Yeah. I feel like we really are becoming those people up in the spaceship in Wally. You saw like Wally, right? Fat tubs of lard sitting at a desk <laughs> watching the screen. I wasn't going to put that. With, with quarantine, yeah, I do feel like that. I wasn't going to put it that harshly, but yeah, yeah, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and for those of you who haven't seen Wally, you probably have no idea what we're talking about, but it's a great Disney Pixar film. I, I don't even want to ruin it for you, just go watch it. But as I'm going through yeah. the different uh, interesting pieces of tech that we'll be talking about today, I really felt like that's what it's all coming to. I really do. So what what what's the first one that made you think that way, that you saw today? Well, maybe first of all, we should think, uh, go through all the ones we saw. You want to go through like our list here? Well, no, I I will have the list, but I think it's important also to start by identifying what were some of the biggest trends of this year. Because CES has trends, right? Like there's always trends with technology. And I'll have everybody know, Brett actually had no clue what CES was until I told him two days ago. There's and he some, works in some, technology. There's some things you don't have to share, you know. Oh, no, like, I, share don't, don't I share it all. I share it all. I share it all. And now everybody knows that you had no clue what CES was, even though you program for I'm a like, living. I was like, yeah, Nick, I shot, I've shot. i shopped there before. Oh, my like God. When, when I went to New York, <laughs> I went to see CBS. <laughs> I can't believe I work with you sometimes. Anyhow. I don't really care, Nick. I know you don't. Anyhow. <laughs> I think it's important to identify what some of the top trends are. So at least what I noticed going through all of the different pieces of tech that 
were unveiled at this year's CES. Number one, Pandemic Tech. Uh, definitely noticed a lot of pandemic tech for sure, which makes sense, right? We're still in the middle of a global pandemic. Well, that was one of that was one of mine. That uh, the razor masks. Yeah, yeah, just don't spoil it. We'll get there. We'll get I, there. I, I think I just spoiled it. But pandemic tech is one I noticed. Number two, at home tech. So technology very much focused on the home life and yeah. being home. Again, shocker, given what the entire world is still going through. Number three was robots. A lot of robots. A lot of robots. Robots that are actually robots. serving a purpose in the home now. Interesting stuff. And lastly, green tech, of course. So more tech focused on sustainability. And renewable energy is yep. something that I noticed. Which, again, makes sense. Because if you consider our new presidential administration here in the United States having a very strong focus on sustainable tech, and this is a trend all over the world. Not shocked to see a movement towards that this year whatsoever. Yeah. But I, I, I do wonder if after the pandemic, if we'll still see a lot of pandemic tech. Like, I wonder how much this will stick around after the pandemic is I don't over. Know. Do you plan on keep, like continue like wearing your mask after this pandemic is over? Probably. Like, when, when you have the, if you ever get the flu or have a cold or anything like that, do you plan on wearing a mask? Absolutely. I think that's how it should have been all along, and we've talked about this. I know, but we haven't talked about it on the podcast. You, you know, it doesn't my... matter whether we've talked about it on the podcast. I told you when I went to Asia, I Nick, realized. I know, no, I know your answers, Nick. I'm just trying to create content for the podcast, so I'll just repeat stuff you've already told me. You know, I hate you. Just I, we've had this conversation millions of times, but this is content for the podcast, so. Say your opinion. I, I think you. I think you looked at this a bit too literally. As I was going to go into my story about mask wearing in Asia for the twelfth time. <laughs> well, you said I told you this story before. We know that. They don't know that. <laughs> Come on. Fine. Anyhow, to your question, yes, I do plan on wearing a mask after the pandemic, specifically when I know that I'm sick and I have to go out to get myself medicine or go to the doctor's office. I think that's how it always should have been, and it's a kindness thing, if you ask me. Yeah. I think that's going to stick around long after this. has nothing to do with my freedoms getting taken away, BS. Um, yeah, I don't... We've never had freedoms, so... Okay, they're, well, that's not... Just, that, they're just, that's they're not just, what... They're just privileges. That's they're not what this anyone. podcast is about. They're so... Nice privileges that we have. Speaking of masks, though... <laughs> One of the most interesting pieces of tech that I think we came across as we were putting all this together was the Razer Smart Mask. Ooh, yes. Ooh. Mask technology, Batman. And by it's the way, hit, it's here and it's going to save your life. It's the same company that uh, <laughs> Brett just ignores me. <laughs> it's the same company that <laughs> the same company that makes Razer mice. For computers, you know? Well, I was going to say that. The Razor, uh, which I, I guess until becoming your friend these last 10 years, really had no idea what Razor was as a company, but they are most known for their video game and PC peripherals and accessories. Blah, I have blah, used blah. Razor for a decade now. Well, now they're getting into the mask business. <laughs> so wow. it just so happens at CES they showcase their new smart mask under the code name of Project Hazel. I, sometimes I really wonder where these companies come up with like these project names. I mean, Hazel, I, 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 I don't, I don't understand it. Anyhow, some highlights of this mask, Brett, that you may or may not have seen. Yeah, it I'm is an N ninety. It is an N ninety five respirator with a glossy, waterproof, stain resistant shell. Might as well bring it up here for everybody to see. So this is what it looks like. Pretty, honestly, pretty sexy. I'm, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna lie. Should Not we describe lie. it for people that are just listening? I mean, probably. It looks what... it looks like a robot mask. Yeah, it looks like a futuristic mask you'd find in that Will Smith I Robot movie. Yeah, like I would wear that. I would totally wear that. Can you but, scroll down a bit? Like, I want to look well, at... let me let me let me let me touch okay. on some of the highlights. <laughs> so it is an N95 respirator. It's glossy. It's waterproof. It has a stain resistant shell. I really feel sorry for people that haven't seen Batman. <laughs> How have you not seen that Batman movie with Bane? <laughs> okay. I was born in the darkness. On, on top, okay, we're done. On top of it being 
stain resistant. It's also transparent, which I think is a really cool feature so people can read your lips. So as you're wearing the mask, people can actually see you talking and read your lips. I think that's really, really, really cool. I don't really like that. I don't care. Why? Like, I don't want people to see my face. Well, that's you. But well, what, if you're, that, oh, what if you're talking to a deaf you're person? Telling me, you're telling me at the grocery store that you've never had your mask on. You've been walking around and you whispered curse words at people. But what if you're mask? talking? What if you're talking to a deaf person? Like if you're a deaf person right now, and deaf people typically train themselves to read lips. Well, now you I feel can't like see what now, anybody's now, I feel like a, now I feel like an ass. You should. Continuing on, it this also. Is a great mask. I like it. I like this. Thanks, mask. Brad. I'm, I'm glad that people. Can glad see it has your face. blessing. Yeah, I'm glad that people can see my face too. This is great. It also includes Razer's Chroma RGB LEDs, which can be personalized, offering 16.8 million colors. So you can like customize the mask with all these different colors, which is also really neat. And it ships with a case that what? not only recharges the mask, but also sanitizing. It's like a little mini disinfecting station. You're, you're telling me that this changes colors? You can change the colors on this? I believe it changes colors around where the... The, the respirator is. That's cool. Yeah, I think that's pretty What a neat. cool mask. And the filter in it supposedly is called a bacterial efficiency filter. Not supposedly, it is called a ba high bacterial efficiency filter that impedes 95% of airborne particles. So it filters out damn near everything. Wow. And they also put a technology in here that they're calling voice amp that uses a built-in microphone and amplifier to augment the speech of the user so they can be heard through the mask very clearly. That's cool. That's that's a really that's a really nice feature to have too because if you consider talking now you sound muffled and yep. I I really think they designed this for esports because consider Ooh, the esports industry consider the esports industry before the pandemic. It was exponential growth and you had all these in-person events and different things and that stopped so talk about a way to have a socially distant esports event and give all of the different teams these masks sponsored by razor sponsored by razor yeah. perfect honestly that's probably what their their play is i'm I, I i would believe i would imagine now the downside though as cool as this may be currently there is no price or release date and razor has uh, 500 bucks. Razor has not received approval from the FDA, CDC, or OSHA. Uh, and yeah, I really wonder how much this would cost. I'm going to put 120 bucks on it. <clears throat> 120? I'd say a lot more than that. With all the technology packed into this thing, I'd say easily 300 plus. 300 plus for a mask? Uh, a mask with this much technology? Absolutely. 150, take it or leave it. I'll, I'll I'll leave it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, you know, it's pretty cool. I I think it looks fantastic, uh, if you ask me. And uh, yeah, we don't need we don't need to listen for me. But yeah, so here's what the, <laughs> the case here's what the case looks like. So it just sits in the cradle, and it uses some type of technology that I wish they offered. Oh, it uses UV light. It uses UV light to actually clean the mask. That's pretty no neat. No way. So and that's what it looks like on somebody. Oh, look at that. Yeah, the color does change. Purple and yeah. blue. That looks cool. That's really neat. Well done. I want one. Too bad they don't have I'm a release date or a price I'm going to wear this after the pandemic, and I'm going to wear it even if I'm not sick. So I just want to feel like Bane 24-7, you know? Yeah, I I I think it that's a really good idea and it looks cool. And again, because I imitate Bane all the time, I could walk into any room. Look at my technology mask, Batman. Do you love that it has breathable filters that cover ninety five percent of all bacteria? Twenty twenty. I was born in the darkness. No <laughs> one <laughs> oh, people aren't going to take us seriously anymore. I don't really care. I you know, I, I had that mask that says twenty twenty sucks on it. And I've been flipping it inside out now because I'm embarrassed to wear it. People reading 2020 sucks because it's 2021 now. So yeah, I, look I guess I guess you really didn't think that through, did you? That no, 2020 I didn't, would I didn't come think to an end. Wait. Well, of course I thought that 2020 would come to an end. I just flipped the mask inside out. It was funny while it lasted, though. Aren't you the cleverest? Not really, no. Moving on. Samsung Robots. <laughs> 
<laughs> there's my moment of Nick going, okay, moving on. <laughs> yep. Samsung robots. So if there was any company that showcased more robot tech than anybody this year at CES, by far, Samsung took the prize, if you ask me. So at this year's CES, they showed off three new AI-powered robots designed for the home because their whole thing is they're now focusing, well, trying to shift their business, it seems to focus primarily on AI-powered mm-hmm. gadgets, not just AI, AI-powered gadgets as a core part of their consumer electronics business. Mm-hmm. So the three bots mentioned include the JetBot AI Plus Robot Vacuum, which when I get into the details, this is pretty neat. The Bot Care Personal Assistant and Bot Handy Robot that can clean and move things around your house. So when you see this Bot Handy Robot, I will ask you what it reminds you of because I know exactly what it reminds me of from a movie. Oh, I know. So, you know I, I've seen a picture of it. I know what it really reminds me of. Well, here it is. It reminds me of that robot on the Jetsons. Oh, I was going to say it reminds me of that robot in Iron Man. That Tony Stark was always like yelling at. Oh my god! Yeah, I re, I re, uh, <laughs> retract my statement. It is, it is totally that. So. Yeah, this 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 is the bot handy. Look, it looks and... like a, a little smile on the bottom. See, it's like. Yep. Well, I I just that when I first saw it, I'm like, that's the robot from Iron Man that Tony Stark would constantly yell at because it kept dousing yeah. him in fire extinguisher yeah, stuff. Yeah, fire extinguisher stuff. Yeah. So that's that that's cool. what that's what it looks like. So they don't really have, at least from what I saw, too many different pictures of the different robots they released. So this is the Bot Handy. Um, I think the Bot Care, it's like this little capsule-looking thing with a face. But even so, pretty neat. So the JetBot 90 AI+, Plus, which is the vacuum, will soon be available for purchase, actually. And it uses LiDAR and 3D sensors to oh. recognize and classify objects to decide the best cleaning path. So it actually yeah. knows what they look like in 3D space and plans out a cleaning path. Man, I keep so hearing it, that. I keep hearing LiDAR now. I feel like that's going to be like the future of technology. Is that you, LIDAR should read up, you should read up on LiDAR. It's been around for a long time, but really the consumer electronic applications have really give a, been within the last few years. You want to give a little condensed speech on what LiDAR is? I mean, I've, I've spent just a... a we have a bunch of, of new. We have up. a bunch of new listeners. I, I think they want to know what lidar is, Nick. I mean, but I just don't want to screw up explaining it because somebody listening could be like, "I know exactly what lidar is," and I don't want to like butcher it. All right, from what Wait, I understand, from what I am, from what I understand, lidar essentially emits photons and measures the distance between the photon hitting a target and back to create a three D image. That's my very high level explanation of it. I read a ton of articles on it a couple months ago, so I wish I could remember more. But essentially, all you got to know is it uses light to figure out what something looks like in 3D space. They use it in topography a lot to measure the tops of trees. Cool. It's a really really great explanation. So now they're putting it in consumer technology. So Mm -hmm. this little vacuum robot here uses it so it knows what is the best cleaning path, what your living room looks like, or whatever room it's in. So it can avoid cables and small objects. I think one of the big things that bugged people about Roomba is that it would always go over stuff they didn't want it to go over. Ooh, I've seen some bad pictures. Like the dog pooped on the floor. And the Roomba went over the dog poop and smeared all across the floor. I was just going to say that. There was that story. I forgot what it was on. It could have been on Reddit or something. It was like two years ago. It was a story of the Roomba going over poop. Yeah. And it 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 covers the entire house in poop. Here you go. You want a big brown strip across your carpet? Here you go. <laughs> so, not I'm not not knocking Roomba at all because I've had family members who had it, but this seems far more advanced than than Roomba. And I'm sure Roomba's working on something. But on top of this cool lidar and 3D sensor tech is in it, users can also set no-go zones and monitor the JetBot's progress using their mobile phone, and you can actually get a live stream like a little camera of the the, the robot moving around cleaning your, your oh. carpets. Oh, so like when you're at work, you can see what it's doing? Yeah. That's cool. And it even empties its own bin at the charging station, so it like empties all of its contents. Is there a price hits. on this? Uh, I did not see one. Because I would love one to just clean my place. I'm sure far too expensive than what I'd be willing to spend. <laughs> on top of buying my manual vacuum cleaner, but pretty, pretty neat nonetheless. How much would you, like, what's the top price you'd pay on this robot? $400. Oh, I was going to say five grand. Wow. 
All right. We're a bit off there in our numbers. Yeah, a little bit off there. <laughs> so the next two bots or robots that they talked about, which again, unfortunately, I don't have a, a picture of here to scroll through for you watching us on, on YouTube. But so the second one was called Bot Care. So it's this little capsule looking robot with a face. It actually does look like Wally. So if you put a picture of Wally next to what this thing looks like, they're 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 pretty much the same. Um and it uses AI to recognize and respond to your behavior. So it can actually like read your facial expressions and know what you're feeling, which is pretty interesting. Cool. It can also learn your schedule, habits, and send you reminders as you go about your day. So it's meant to be like a personal assistant bot. But also understand you emotionally. No way. Yeah. It learns your emotions? Well, I'm assuming they train the AI to recognize human emotion based on facial expression. So, yeah. Cool. Of like course, that. of course, AI does not actually know emotion, but it, it, <clears throat> it is told, oh, frown means sad. Yeah. Whatever sad is. In, frown means I... An ultra intelligent this robot noise. speak. I say this. Right, yes. Yeah. And then the third, which is what we do have an image of here, is Bot Handy. And it's designed to literally be an extra hand around the house. This one, this one I'd take in a heartbeat. So it uses AI and computer vision to recognize and pick up objects of various sizes, shapes, and weights. And if you thought that was cool, it can also tell the difference between the material composition of different objects. So. Oh. Yeah, so it actually lets the bot calculate the right amount of force to move household objects. So, like, wow. if it's grabbing an egg, it knows how much force to exert on it. If it's grabbing a vase, it knows how much force to exert on it. Like, this is Jetson stuff. That's some like, cool stuff. Right yeah. There. Wow. And it, it's designed to clean up messy rooms and sort dishes. As the image we have here on CNET shows, it's by a dishwasher, and it's sorting dishes out for you to put away. I tell you, when you look at some of this stuff, it's like, <laughs> I can't believe we can do this. <laughs> it's so cool. And that's what I love about just being in the tech industry more than anything is this. Humans it's just, cool. it's so cool. All of it is just so cool. Humans are cool. Like the which stuff is, we've invented. Which is why I don't understand people who complain about technology. I'm like, I think you're just complaining because you, you just don't even want to try and understand it. Yeah. And it really doesn't take that much to understand. But when you start looking at things like Bot Handy, like it, it's just so cool that we can yep. do this. So that's the Samsung robots. Next one. Are you ready, this, Brad? This one's going to be cool. I like this one. I see. And this one, like, I don't I don't really get it. So the next one I'm is... Ne I'm never gonna, I would never own one. I don't really care. But I think they're cool looking. Well, let, let, let's tell the people what, what it is. So LG... LG rollable smartphone. So yeah. LG has, I mean, there's there's been, of course, foldable smartphones, right? And I, I, I'm sure we all remember a couple of years ago, people buying those and the screens were breaking. But <laughs> after much speculation <laughs> and teasing, LG officially announced their rollable smartphone will be coming to market sometime in 2021. So from what I was able to read and understand and, you know, take a look at this this image that's presented here, LG call well the, the rollable smartphone has what LG calls a in quotes unique resizable screen that extends from the phone into a small tablet display. So this phone smart it, it starts like a regular smartphone if you hold it horizontally yeah. and then it extends and the screen grows but then it can also shrink back. I I noticed that like, it's not really you're not really rolling it you're just extending it. Right. Like when so, I think of rolling it, like rolling up like a map. Here's some more concept of what it's like, and and see if you watch it here. That's what the screen does. That's cool though. So like I get it, but yeah, why? Uh, just because it's cool and new. Right. There's, but there's no practicality to it at all. I, I was gonna say, but like, what's do I really need that though? Do, just, do we really just like, need rollable phone screens? That's just like the whole 3D uh, TV phase. Remember the 3D TV phase? I still can't believe they made such a big push on 3D televisions it, ten years ago. I was like, even back cares? then, like, being a teenager. Even back then, being a teenager, I was like, "What? Why?" <laughs> yeah, this is, this is gonna die. I think so. My, along same thing with this phone. I don't think it's gonna. Nobody's gonna care for it. 
Nobody's gonna, nobody's I, gonna want it. I think ten years ago, my mom even she got she upgraded her TV and she got a 3D TV. I think we tried using it once, and I was like, "This is dumb." <laughs> Never turned it on again. Yep. Remember the, the little uh, DSs that came out too, the Nintendo DSs that were 3D. I never turned on the 3D aspect of it. Nobody did. Never liked it. It made me feel like seasick. I had a cousin who got one, and I'm like, "What's all the you know? What, what, what's the big deal about the 3D?" And I turned it on. I'm like, "Oh my gosh, I'm gonna break into a seizure." Yeah. <laughs> I feel like I'm going cross-eyed. Yeah, I, I don't. I don't think anybody used the 3D on that. Anyhow, yeah, I just I'm, I'm trying to figure out the whole rollable screen thing. Like, what's the added value? And it's a cool feature, but how does it enhance? My current smartphone experience from what I already have is what I look at. And I can't really come up with anything. It doesn't. <clears throat> the I mean, screen's does, just bigger. I mean, it does have an OLED display, but most of the new smartphones, high-end smartphones, have OLED displays. So that's not like, got to rush yeah. out and buy this thing. Yeah, I don't. I would never, I don't really care for it. I would never go out and buy one. I think a regular phone is fine, you know? I mean... The evolution of the smartphone has really only just begun, you know, more than yeah. likely to wind up in our wrists at some point. I, I don't know if you've ever seen the concepts for smartphones, but it's like a virtual keyboard. It's like you sit the phone in a cradle or it has a projection mechanism coming from the phone and you sit the phone horizontal and you can just type yeah. on any surface. I want that. That seems useful. Or what Apple is doing now with iPhones is they're putting LiDAR sensors in their iPhones for their There's AR LiDAR. features. LiDAR again. But I'm just saying there's 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 far more there's there's what am I trying to say? I can't there are many more useful features that can be added to smartphones of today. I'm just I'm just not sold on the whole <clears throat> rollable thing. Or the That's foldable it. thing. Why do I want a foldable phone? You don't. There's no point to it. <laughs> um as soon, what, the day the day they have uh, contact lenses where I can just project the image out in front of me, I can just go like this. Wow. That I will want that. We're I'll probably, probably ways. I'll probably never see that. We're probably oh, ways. Cool. We're probably ways away from contact lenses, but I, if you listen to Robert Scoble's episode from late 2020, he talks about what Apple's coming out with this year, and I think that's going to be their first solid evolution of yep. practical and useful augmented reality tech. Anyhow, go listen to that episode if you want to learn more. So that is the rollable phone. Next up, LG Transparent TV. This, this I thought was really neat. This I can see like, okay. Again, not needed, but still really cool. So what did LG do here? Well, LG, of course, is very well known for their smartphones and their televisions. I mean, well, they also do sound equipment, but I think most people know them for their televisions and smartphones. But they continue right. to push the envelope in the TV market and introduce the concept of a transparent OLED TV at the foot of your bed. So this is what it looks like. So it, it sits at the foot of your bed and it pops up and the screen is transparent. So from from what I understand, if you're sitting right in front of it, it, it there's only a little bit see-through, but I mean, you're still getting the full display. And, but if you want to turn the screen off to be fully transparent, you can do that. And it's oh, like yeah, completely see-through. So it can be fully transparent like, like glass. Yes. Oh, yes. Yeah, so Dude, that's they, sick. the concept is it sits at the foot of your bed and it pops up. It's also mobile, so you can take it to any room of your house. Uh, the question, you know, the question is, uh, how good is the picture on it? Is it like 4K? Is it 8K? What is it? Uh, it's OLED, so I would imagine it's 4K or above. It's uh, it's portrayed as a 55-inch OLED panel, but it lets you see through it even when it's turned on displaying an image. So I think that it says here the the screen is reported to achieve 40% transparency. So I'm assuming you can still see all of your content and all of yeah. your programming, but it's also see-through at the same time. Again, don't entirely know what the value is there, but it's cool nonetheless. But it's cool. I, like, like I'd, buy, I'd buy a phone like that. If I could pick up like a piece of glass and yeah. have my phone like that, that'd be sweet. Like what Tony Stark has in the Iron Man movies. Yeah. <laughs> Dude, I want it now. I swear, Marvel, those Iron Man movies, he had the coolest stuff. And I feel like the stuff that they portrayed him as having will actually get at some point. It's just a matter of when. Yeah. Now, I can see the commercial applications for a see-through TV screen like this entirely. Like, imagine you're on a subway train and you can still see the outside, but it has, like, you know, your route and the next upcoming stop and different things. I can see that totally practical there. Still trying to figure out for it being used in the home, but... Cool yeah. nonetheless. It's very cool. I like it. 
Now, this isn't the first transparent display, but it is one of the best showed off by far, apparently. There have been, uh, Samsung has showed some off, and a couple other manufacturers have showed off some different models going as far back as 2016, but this is, like, the best concept so far. It's um, also... Uh, is it the, the, does it say anything about glares? Is it better with glares? I, I didn't read anything on glares, mm, no. Okay, all right. But I think what's interesting about this one, it is also the first display meant strictly for TV or to be used in the home. Yeah. So a lot of the other displays that they've shown are meant for more commercial or, or yeah. retail purposes. This one is specifically meant to be used in the home. However, it is a concept, so it may or may not become an actual product according to LG. I'd love to no. see this become a product. This is really neat. Yeah, I like that. I think it's cool. Now, again, we talk about practicality. Don't entirely know. but There's no, there's no reason for it. No. <laughs> but it's just cool. <laughs> but if, I, you, if you look at a lot of the technology that comes to CES, a lot of it is concept-based. Yeah. And the reason that's valuable is it, it shows the direction of a company. Even though the, the product may never come to life, it shows how the gears are turning and where they're yep. thinking yep. of going, which yep. is valuable. Now, yep. this next one. Huh, this next one is really neat. I love this next one. And that is uh, General Motors and Cadillac's Halo VTOL Air Taxi. Look at this thing. This is what we need. This is like... So you, <laughs> I you, love it. You fly that. You can fly that. So let me let me go through some of the details here. Is there a backpack? Let me go through some of the details here. So I want to know now. Tell me now. I will tell you. So during <laughs> during General Motors keynote at CES, they showed off a lot of different vehicles, both real and concept, of course, this being a concept one, to explain their vision for the future of transportation. So this they call their Halo E VTOL. So it's a single-seater drone VTOL craft with a 90-kilowatt battery that can travel from rooftop to rooftop up to 90 kilometers or 56 miles per hour. Can you imagine sitting in this thing going 50 miles per hour up in the air? Yeah, I, I want to do it now. <laughs> like, we've had hovercraft for a really long time, I will, right? I will give you the price of a car to fly that. But, like, you, you know we've had, like, hovercraft for a while, right? Like, the military uses hovercraft. Yeah, but so I want this. I view, right, I view this as just the next evolution of hovercraft. I mean, of course, we've had drone technology for a while now, but, like, to put a person in something like this, I think, like, this really could be the future of, of short-range transportation. Imagine you're in a bigger city, and you need to just hop to another building for a meeting. Instead of having to deal with cars and taxis, you just hop aboard one of these things, and it flies you there. Like, that's um, so cool. That That fixes such a big problem. I knowing, think. Know, knowing some of the people in this country and personally myself, I don't really see this going too far. I see some getting their head chopped off in the drone blades. <laughs> Honestly, uh, probably. Yeah. <laughs> yep. I, I also definitely see that probably happening. But this is why it's a concept, right? So yeah. also, it does contain air-to-air -air and air-to-ground communications capabilities. So you're always in contact with other vehicles, I assume, and, and ground communications. So they apparently have more concepts planned, such as a luxurious two-seater designed for couples. Oh. So imagine going on a date night and you want to soar the skies of New York City. Well, hop in your EV tall craft and smooch each other on the cheek while you're soaring above the, the city skyline. <laughs> great. <laughs> Honestly, um, if they actually that happens, that's a great business. How, how long does it last, like the battery power on it? A uh, 90-kilowatt battery? I, I, honest, I don't know. I couldn't tell you. I'd imagine it I doesn't die immediately. Article. I didn't know if they said in the article that they had a battery life on it. It just said 90-kilowatt battery. I'd imagine for something like this, you don't want too short of a battery life, right? Yeah, fall out of the sky. That'd be great. But more than likely, GM said that this will not become an actual product, but it does well, signal... <laughs> where GM and automakers have their attention focused heading into the near if, future. So, so here's, a, be, here's another car <laughs> they announced, and then here's the EV tall. If I was going to be realistic, this should never, ever, ever become a product. The amount of casualties that we'll have with this thing well, that's is why you go really through safety. astronomical. That's why you, okay, but you can say the same thing about helicopters. You don't hear people running into helicopter blades constantly. How many people fly helicopters? 
I'm just saying, though, you I'm still talking, don't... If this, if this turns into, like, a car thing where everybody has one, the amount of casualties you'll see. Right, but this... Again, you can apply the same logic, though, to a helicopter landing and somebody being like, I'm going to run into the back tail blade! Like, that does, just doesn't happen. I understand that, but there's not... Helicopters aren't like cars, Nick. Where everybody has when they're flying them around. Okay, well, nobody's saying everybody's going to own one of these things. If we had... If we had helicopters like we had cars, you gar- I guarantee you we'd have people being like, I just ran into the the blade in the back. That would happen. There are people doing jumping well, jacks. I'm not, I'm not disagreeing with you that there'll be a couple of idiots that jump head first into the moving blades because that's just how <laughs> life works. But, I mean, I, I think it's wrong to say you've got to apply that to the entirety of society because we have dangerous vehicles that we all currently use on a daily basis and you just don't see things like that okay i guess i guess fatalities are high in cars but yeah that's because everybody has one i'll just shut up i i wasn't trying to argue with you i was just 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 saying you know no i but i i do think when you look at something like that if that really is going to be the future of transportation guaranteed there are going to be a ton of safety checks done, regulation beyond anything we've probably ever seen. Yeah. I mean, you're not going to probably be able to walk into your local EV talk retailer or Cadillac dealer and pick up one of these things. I'm sure it's going to be like companies like Uber operating them to get people from place to place. Yep. You or I, unless we're probably ultra wealthy, will never own one of those things. Not to mention it's probably going to be way too expensive for anybody to ever own one. And if we ever do... If this ever does, does become a product and like the mass buys them, we'll probably be like sixty years old and we'll be like, you know, back in my day we drove cars and not hover bikes. <laughs> you know? Oh my god, I don't want to think about that. <laughs> <laughs> Honestly though, I think for the near term electric vehicles. Grandpa, that's... it's fine, it's safe, Grandpa, you're fine. No, I, uh... I work my car. <laughs> for... <laughs> For the near term and probably more or less the long term, it's going to be self-driving electric vehicles. Like that's yes, that's, that's what it is. These uh, new Teslas driving themselves. That's self-driving cool. electric vehicles that most people probably won't actually own. You'll be able to just summon it on demand to take you from place to place. The concept of owning a car will be a distant memory. Correct. Yeah. Which I actually I'm okay with that because I've always viewed cars as one of the most ridiculous expenses a person can take on. Because you don't actually... Yeah, you get from place to place, which is important. I get it. But you lose money the moment you drive it off the lot, and you lose money the entire time you own it. Yeah. It's not an asset that appreciates. No. That's why, like... Like, I get if you have a lot of money buying a sports car or a really nice car, but people, you know, in our circles who are like... I just want to blow money on a, a seventy thousand dollar Jeep or a, you know a, a fifty five thousand dollar whatever it is. I'm like, but it, it, what's the point? You lose so much money. It's just meant to get you from point. I get. I have a night. I love my car. Don't get me wrong, but I still don't like how much I had to pay for it. Are you getting close to being done paying for that car? It's been Two five years. years. Is it? Oh, really? Years. It's only been yep. three years. Okay, never mind. Well, I think I took out a. A six-year loan on it. Oh, six years. Okay. Yeah. So. Also, that'll be a thing of the past, having to take out a loan on one of these things. Yeah. Because if you can just summon it, then by yeah. all means. Cool. And then the last one here. Wow, I'm really doing these cutovers quite quite dramatically. I think is, in my opinion, the most useful and the coolest product that is actually going to be available for purchase relatively soon. And that is the Infinity Game Table. I wish I had this when I was a kid. Yeah, this is neat, folks. So, of course, right now when we think about playing board games, right, we have to open the board game, set up all the pieces, and I get there's a novelty to that. Don't get me wrong, but at CES this year, a company by the name of Arcade 1UP developed a an electronic virtual game table that just has a digital display with a very simple idea behind it where you can play any board game you want without having to set a a single thing up. 100% digital experience. I think this is genius. Yeah, you can pull up any game you want, like Candyland. (laughs) And the reason I think this is genius is because Brett and I have played something called Tabletop Simulator on PC. 
And Tabletop Simulator is a $20 game you can get for your computer where developers and independent people create something called mods that are just board games that you can play virtually on your PC with anybody online. Yep, and we have a fantastic time playing that. Yes. So when I saw this, I'm like, that's just taking... That's just moving Tabletop Simulator to the physical space, which I think is brilliant. Yeah, that's I cool. do. Because it's still probably easier to tap and touch and swipe than it is to move everything with a mouse like you have to do with Tabletop Simulator. Oh, man. Uh, Nick, imagine if they had um, a HoloLens where the, it would be 3D. Oh, that's can, coming, I'm play, sure. You can play a board game in 3D. Um, that's, you know, VR. that's coming, I'm sure. But AR, look, at, look at how cool this looks, though. It's like you just set it up. It has its little digital display. Um, I think it looks really neat, personally. So what are some of the highlights of this thing? So your family actually doesn't have to be in the same home. So if other people you know own this thing, you can play with one another online. <clears throat> so like, That's imagine cool. you have the table set up, you have other people on Zoom or even on the phone, and you're all just playing the game remotely. It's pretty neat. Cool. So I think even cooler, this whole thing, it began as a Kickstarter campaign with backers pledging more than $1 million in support of it. So it only happened because people like you or I were like, I really want this thing and toss money into it, which I think is neat. So units are going to start shipping to early supporters by March, early supporters of the Kickstarter campaign, and will cost around $600. I expected it to cost way more. I think that's pretty cheap for something like this. Yeah. I agree. Oh, that's pretty cheap for that. And I, they, it, it appears they have a licensing agreement with Hasbro because it's launching with a handful of classic Hasbro games like Monopoly, Hungry Hungry Hippos, that type of stuff. Oh, cool. So, and Arcade 1UP said they want to open up the game table to developers to build new game concepts. So either adding into the already existing games, kind of like the mods for Tabletop Simulator, yeah. or building completely virtual board games for it. That's awesome. Yeah, that's, that's why this is this is my favorite because I think this is this is the most practical. <laughs> I'd buy one. Absolutely, if I had spare six hundred dollars lying around, I would do it in a heartbeat. Yeah, for sure. I mean, cool. let alone I own a lot of board games and we have tabletop simulator, but still, yeah, still really neat. So I thought I thought that was pretty cool. Cool. Well. That's all we have, six. folks. Yeah, that's all we have. <laughs> we only had six we went through, because I'm like, Brett, how many of these do we actually want to cover? Well, I mean, were... we are at 42 minutes. That's like what we're aiming for, so. There were there were so many different pieces of tech. I, I highly encourage you, if this type of stuff interests you, to just go into Google and type in, you know, interesting tech from CES 2021, top tech of CES 2021, and you will just be met with so many different articles about mm -hmm. what was shown. And I think... You look at CES, right? It's yeah. normally meant as an in-person trade show. In fact, it is one of the world's largest trade shows, and it always happens in Las Vegas. This year, it was done completely virtual. Yep. So I actually went to the LG virtual booth space. It was actually pretty neat, the way they had it set up and, and how they did their exhibition space. Cool. So I think it's fitting also, and I, I'm, I'm kind of surprised I didn't do it before, that the Consumer Electronics Show actually leveraged technology to showcase new technology. And I think this will be one of the events that more than likely after the pandemic will probably do more of a hybrid thing where they have both in-person and hybrid for people who either can attend in person or don't want to. So, but yeah, that's that's some of the... The interesting tech from from CS 2021. Perfect. That's Anything cool. Anything else to add, Brett? I have nothing else to add, but I Shocking. do like this new layout. <laughs> oh yeah. gosh, I honestly, from doing the video thing like this with Streamyard, I feel like our conversation with one another has also been like ten times better. Yep. It feels way more natural. It feels way more. It feels like I actually talk to you. Personal. Like we're actually in the same room. Well then. And again, for those of you who are not, you're listening to this and not seeing, you know, the YouTube video, Brett and I, and we've mentioned for a while we wanted to do more videos, so we actually started using a platform called StreamYard to record our podcast videos where 
you know, if Brett and I can't get together, which we probably will be doing coming up here, we could still do it virtually like this. And we can add like branding and share screen yeah. out and, and all this different stuff. I'll probably be using this from here on out recording all of our guest interviews, to be honest. Yeah, you're going to reduce what I was going to ask you if you're going to have the guest. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah I, I really like it. This is cool. But anyhow, thank you again for joining us this week. It's been a blast. Brett and I, as always, have a ton of fun, right, Brett? I do, yes. So... We're currently working on some new guest episodes. Again, as I've mentioned, send us a message if you're interested in being on the show or if you know someone who may be willing to talk to anybody who is currently working in tech, specifically AI, voice, 5G, blockchain, Internet of Things. Really, there's so many different facets of technology right now. I'm really trying to diversify and get some people working on some game-changing stuff. So... Please feel free to send a message if you may be that person or if you know know of somebody. And, of course, make sure to smash that subscribe button on YouTube if you're watching... Brett's shaking his head. Oh, if you're watching this on YouTube... Ring that well bell as, notification. <laughs> as well as subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Podcasts, and Anchor.fm. And don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter... Luckily, Brett and I have decided to invest in a virtual assistant for Red Fox who is helping us get all of our digital marketing and social media into shape. So we'll hopefully be more active on our social media soon. And we're even thinking about opening up a Discord server because the Facebook group didn't go too well. I, we had a Facebook group? Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so <Oops. laughs> with all that being said, take care and we'll be back next week. Sounds good. See you later. Recognition. Machine learning. You've been listening to the Artificial Podcast with your host Nick Myers. Nick Myers. To stay up to date with all our latest episodes, you can subscribe on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and Google Podcasts. To learn more about how your organization can benefit by unlocking the power of AI and voice, visit www.redfox-ai.com. Until next time.